Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot and share with you a little bit about my experiences with this deck and how I work with it. So this is an indie deck by Dame Darcy and it comes in this beautiful magnetic closure box. I'm not sure which edition this is, but it is from 2018. And this is a deck that... To be perfectly honest, I went back and forth with about trying to decide if it was a deck that I actually needed in my collection. Um, I knew I liked the artwork, but I was like, mm, I'm not really into mermaids and I still am not like super into mermaids. I, I do like mermaids. I have um, a few little mermaid knickknacks and, and a little kind of almost mermaid shelf that this deck sits on. It's like a little mini shelf and this deck kind of is the central focal point of that little shelf and I've kind of erected a little bit of a mermaid altar using this deck. But at the time that I purchased it, I wasn't like super into mermaid energy. Now, I love anything beachy and I grew up on the beach down in Southern California and now having moved to the Pacific Northwest, the beach along the Oregon and Washington coast is not near the same as it is down in Southern California, but it's still my favorite place to be is at the beach. And so I do tend to love anything that has kind of a beachy energy to it, anything that definitely has any sort of sea life in it. And while I've always really liked mermaids and I've always like I grew up with the Little Mermaid and my kids watched the Little Mermaid and that was like a huge thing in our house um, for quite a long time, I really wasn't super attracted to mermaid energy. I think mermaids are pretty and they're cool and you know I like the kind of mythological story behind them but they were never like a huge draw for me. So I wasn't really sure that I needed a mermaid themed deck although I have lots of decks in my collection that have various themes in them. This just mermaids just wasn't really one of them that I I had really dove into before. So I was kind of like back and forth about whether or not I needed this deck. I purchased it as, as it says in 2018. And ever since then, I have kind of fallen in love with this deck. Um, it has such a wonderful, playful energy for me when I do readings with it. Um, it to me, it is a very lighthearted, fun, and it's a deck that really enjoys to play. It doesn't take itself super seriously. And it's a deck that for me feels very much in tune with summer energy, as in it's light and play. And I feel like let's go splash around in the waves and have some fun together. That's what this deck is for me. And I so enjoy working with it because it is such a nice departure away from some of my more serious kind of deep dive decks, which I do enjoy that type of work as well. But sometimes you just need a break and sometimes you just need to have a little fun, bring a little lightheartedness and joy into your life. And for me, that is what this deck does. And I absolutely love it for that. Um, I've had done a lot of readings with it. I've spent whole months with it before. And it's just one that, it's one of those decks that just makes me smile whenever I get it out. Even just to go through it and, and flip through it, I, I'm, it just makes me smile just to do that. Um, it's very Ten of Cups kind of, kind of deck for me, perfect when that comes up. Uh, but anyway, it's a deck that I really, really enjoy. It's a deck that I work with a lot. And I don't show it a lot on my channel because it seems like the decks that I do the deepest amount of work with get the least amount of play on my channel for some reason. And that's probably because they're not new, most of them. And I've had them for a while and they just kind of become a normal part of my tarot routine or my tarot practice. And so I don't think to really share them as something new or exciting because they're not. They're like old friends. And that is kind of what this deck has kind of become to me. It's like an old friend that I meet up with every summer and we go to the beach together and we hang out and we just enjoy each other's company and that is so what this deck does for me. 
So um, I thought, in addition to kind of just talking about my relationship with it, I have never done a proper walkthrough of this deck. So um, I thought we'd actually go through, I'm going to put the deck back in order, and I'm going to take you through kind of a deep dive walkthrough of this deck so that we can take a look at all the cards, even though I've pretty much flipped through them all now. Like, here's, here's what's left, but that's okay. We'll go through them in order because I do want to share this deck with you. I do want to kind of give it the attention that it deserves on my channel. That is kind of my hope with these videos, talking more about the decks that I work with on a regular basis. But because they're not, you know, new and they're not the hottest, latest, greatest things, they don't tend to get a lot of play. But they are very important parts of my um, deck collection, my tarot practice, and so I want to be sure to take the time to share with you how I work with those decks and kind of what they mean to me personally. So I'm going to go ahead and put this deck back in order and then we will take a look through all of the cards because for some reason I've never done a walkthrough so we're going to go ahead and include that here today. So we begin with our full, which I think sums up the energy of this deck beautifully. We have this kind of court jester looking almost mermaid and she's getting ready to jump through the big zero or the big hoop into the ocean and she is kind of laughing. We have the ha 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 down here. I just think this card really encapsulates the energy of this deck. It is fun, it is playful, um, and it has a little bit of, of an edge to it, which is quite wonderful. So here we have our magician, and this is a very Waitsmith um, inspired deck. So it does follow that tradition in terms of our majors and our minors. So we see here we have the magician with all of his tools, but again, he's a mer person, so he is embodied in his mermaid world. But I love that he has out of all of his outer tools that he needs to cultivate. And then we have our High Priestess, which is one of the cards in the deck that doesn't quite fit the mermaid theme. Um, I think the green behind her is probably like a kind of greenish ocean water, but it does look a little grass-like. So she's a little bit harder to tie into the mermaid energy, but I think she's quite beautiful. She definitely speaks to that idea of inner knowledge and inner wisdom, which I think is quite lovely. So here we have our Empress, which I think really embodies the beautiful mermaid energy that we find in this deck. Um, she's definitely one of my favorite cards, and I think she really, she has that beautiful kind of um, 50s pinup style type of mermaid energy to her that I think, again, fits really well the theme, the energy, and the scope of this deck. And here we have our emperor, which is quite interesting because he is a ship's captain. But you can see here there's another person holding his hand on the wheel. And it looks like it's probably a female, so maybe a mermaid because we can see some long red hair here. And I think that's quite lovely, the idea that, you know, the empress is helping the emperor steer his ship, guide his journey. I just think that's quite clever, and I do really like that. So here we have our Hierophant and we see the two mermaids kind of coming together. I love that we have this kind of statue, almost has a little bit of a sea goddess energy to it. And I think that's quite lovely. And again, fits really well with the theme of the deck, but we do see those kind of tie-ins to the Waitsmith system if that's something that is in line with how you read. So here we have our lovers, which is a bit more indicative of like a Marseille style deck. And of course we have our two mermaids on either side with the angelic figure in the center. Do you think that's quite lovely? Here we have our beautiful chariot, and this is one of my favorite cards in the deck, even though I don't typically like the chariot card very much in most decks, but I think this one is done really beautifully. We have a lot of movement and flow. We have the mermaid that is very in her element. You know, she feels very much in control, and we have the dolphins here, and you can see that the reins are kind of like kelp or seaweed, and they're not really attached to the dolphins, so we don't necessarily get the sense that she's controlling the dolphins, as in she's more just in connection to the dolphins and I think that's just really beautiful. So here we have our gorgeous strength card and we have that typical lady and the lion imagery but of course our lady here is a mermaid. The traditional hermit figure he's got his lanterns but we can see that he's definitely at the ocean to me I love this because we often go to the ocean to kind of take that time out for solitude and I think this card just fits beautifully in with that energy. 
So here we have our Wheel of Fortune, again, quite traditional in its styling, but I do really like the fact that it kind of ties into the mermaid theme. We have the clouds and we have the um, ship's wheel there, and we do still see our little elements, but there are all kinds of little little details in these cards that I think add quite a bit of whimsy and fun to the deck. Our beautiful justice card. She's of course sitting on the shell here. She has the sword and the scales, very traditional. Um, this little pearl here, the way that it's drawn, it always looks to me like it's winking at me. So again, just kind of another little thing that brings a little bit of lightheartedness and a little bit of playful energy to the deck. That may have not been the artist's intention, but it is what I see every time I see that little pearl. It's like He's got his little smile here is one eye open and the other eye he's winking at me, right? Like he knows something that maybe I don't know or we're sharing a secret between each other. It's just another little fun bit of play in this deck. So here we have our hanged man. And again, it's a sailor. He's tied up to the mast. So another thing that I like about this deck is we do have, even though it is a mermaid deck, we do have some masculine figures and we do have some um, kind of human ocean energy tie-ins with the sailors and the boats and things of that nature. So it kind of bridges those two worlds for me, which I do quite like. I do like that he doesn't look like um, he's, you know, forcibly being held up there. He definitely looks like he's surrendering himself, which is lovely. So here we have our death card, which always kind of makes me giggle whenever I see it because death is riding a seahorse and we see this kind of almost zombie looking, definitely dead looking sailor down here at the bottom and death's kind of just riding on doing his thing. It just makes me giggle. So here we have our beautiful temperance card. And again, I love that we have the mermaid. She's doing the mixing between the two shells. Very traditional in our depiction, but of course also tying back into the mermaid theme, which is lovely. So here we have our devil card, which is again, another card that kind of makes me giggle because the devil looks like he is crying, which is so interesting to me. Very traditional looking in this depiction where we have two figures that are chained to the devil here. But of course we have mermaid figures. Um, they do also have wings and horns. So they kind of look a little bit devilish in their mermaidness. Um, but I just get a kick out of the fact that the devil either looks like he's really sweating some bullets or he is crying, whatever it is, he knows that you're not going to stay here in this space long with him. And so he's stressing about it. And I think that's kind of funny. So here we have our tower. And one of the things that I really like about this tower is that the tower you can see here, of course, you know, it's crumbling and we have the people who are jumping out of it. And it's on the, the side of the cliff and all of that. But you can see here that this giant wave is coming to wash the, the tower and it's going to put that fire out. And so I kind of love that the idea that from the depths of the ocean, from the depths of self and the depths of feeling, we can kind of calm the chaos because once this giant wave gets through kind of creating its own destruction in a sense it's going to kind of calm everything down once the seas calm down it's going to put that fire out it's going to calm things back down and so it really um speaks to me of there's going to be some some calm after the chaos of the tower energy and of course because the tower isn't the end of the major arcana we know that there is more to follow so i really love that idea and then you follow that here with the star. So again, washing away that um, kind of calming things down, washing away all of the old things that no longer serve us, that destruction in the tower card. And here we see the star card where we've got the mermaid who is submerged into the water. And one of the things I really like about this star card is you can see that the bottom portion of her, her mermaid portion is down in the water and her more human-esque portion is on the land or leaning against the land. And so I just love that idea of she is of both. She's of the land and of the sea, and she's bringing those two elements together. A little bit of a temperance vibe there in that as well, but I love the idea of that. She's kind of following her destiny of being of her own two worlds and being comfortable within both. And I think that's quite lovely. 
So here we have the gorgeous moon card and I absolutely love the little tentacles coming up through the through the water, that real idea of we don't necessarily knowing what's going on under the depths. And it really brings that idea of kind of a little bit of mystery and illusion to the moon card, which I think is something that we um, kind of tend to ignore a little bit in more modern decks, or we tend to kind of uh, wash this sort of mystery and illusion away out of the moon. And we like to really focus in on that you know, inner self and intuition, but there is a bit of darkness and mystery in the moon card as well. And I think this card actually depicts it beautifully. We have this mermaid coming out of the ocean and she's kind of, you know, enjoying herself and embodying and maybe being in communion with the moon. But we also have these kind of shadowy, tentacly energy coming up, you know, trying to kind of warn us that there there is other things going on here that we don't really um, know about. And so I think that's really fascinating how those two energies really play well in this um, in this moon card. So here we have our gorgeous sun card. Again, not a card that I generally like a ton in most decks, but I think this one is quite beautiful. Again, it really embodies that joyous energy of the deck. We have this beautiful, youthful looking mermaid on a seahorse, you know, kind of leaping from the water in joy and in fun. And it does also kind of tie back into the idea that sun is life. It gives life both on land and in sea. And I think that is just a beautiful kind of combination between those two energies. So here we have the judgment card. So we have our mermaids here that are being called forth. They're being summoned by the angel up here. Again, very traditional card, more of a card of calling, of awakening. And I think it, it does work very beautifully. We definitely see the tie into the um, mermaid theme and the ocean energy as well. So here we have our gorgeous world card. And one of the things I do like about this world card, there is some diversity. There is diversity in this deck too, which is quite lovely. We have this beautiful mermaid in the center and she is kind of wrapped around in the stars and the clouds. And we have all the figures in the four corners. Again, very traditional, but I think it's just an absolutely beautiful mermaid-esque tradition or interpretation of the world card. And I really love that like all the letters in the world are colored. I think that's just a nice little touch. One of the things that I do like that Dame Darcy does with her decks is that she includes the name of the card within the artwork. So it's not just plunked onto the bottom as a title. It's actually embedded in the artwork and becomes a part of the artwork, which is quite interesting. I feel like if you're going to do titles like that, that's a great way to do it. Um, she does sign every piece of artwork, which I think does maybe not necessarily needed, but I do really like the way that she's chosen to incorporate the um, text within the cards. We saw that all throughout the Major Arcana as well, where the titles are mixed into the artwork itself. So here we have our Ace of Cups, again, very traditional. Instead of a cup, we have a shell, which I think works really beautifully for this particular deck. And here we have our Two of Cups card, which I absolutely love. And this card comes up for me all the time with this deck, which does really, I think, tie into my relationship with this deck, which is very much like kind of bridging those two worlds. We see the mermaid and the sailor. They're coming together, even though they are of different worlds, and they're going to create something beautiful together. I think that's just wonderful. So here we have our Three of Cups, definitely getting that idea of play and collaboration between these three mermaids. Again, we can see a little bit of diversity, which is really, really lovely. Here we have our Four of Cups, which again looks quite traditional. We have this mermaid and she has her three shells down here and she's being offered a fourth and she does look quite bored or disinterested in that fourth cup being offered. I think that definitely ties into our traditional Waitsmith interpretation of the Four of Cups, but it also is not super locked in. So if you read a little bit more elementally or numerologically, I think you can work with that as well. So here we have our Five of Cups, which I think is quite beautiful in this deck. I love the extra little um, vine work that has been included. It just kind of adds a little something special to the card. It gives it kind of a hint of melancholy in a sense, which I think works really well for the Five of Cups. We see these cups knocked over here, her two cups on the side. She's not looking at what's left over. She's looking at what's been spilled. And I think that works beautifully for our Five of Cups. Very traditional but a very somber, melancholy kind of card that I think really evokes that feeling beautifully. 
So here we have our Six of Cups, which is just a cute little card, very reminiscent of um, that nostalgia energy that we see in our traditional decks. We have all the cups that are full of seaweed and stars and plants, and it's just beautiful. The rainbow in the background, like everything is beautiful and wonderful in this card. And here we have our Seven of Cups, again, quite traditional, where we see all of the cups with something different in each of them, and our mermaid who is looking at all of her different options. Here we have our beautiful Eight of Cups, again, very traditional. One of the things that I really like about this cup is we have some shadowy energy going on here in the artwork. There's some deep shadows and there's these rocks. We have some deep shadow here coming over the tree, over the top of the moon, deep shadows here cast by the cups. So this idea that maybe the things that we're walking away from in this eight are some of those shadowy things that no longer serve us. And I think that's just a beautiful tie-in that we don't necessarily always see in an eight of cups card. So here we have our nine of cups with our sailor or nautical person who is kind of in this moment of celebration and enjoyment. Although if you look at the look on that person's face, whether or not they're super excited about their situation remains to be seen. Um, sometimes the nines can be a lot of energy. Sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. And I love that this card and in particular the look on the person's face really kind of opens it up to that. Sometimes that's a lot of energy to deal with and I think that this card depicts that beautifully. Yes, it's happy and celebratory and, and we're all happy and good and in this wonderful space, but sometimes it can be a little much and I think this card just depicts that beautifully. So here we have our Ten of Cups, and I love this kind of idea of the happy family next to the water living on the beach. We have the rainbow with the Ten Cups in it. Very traditional, but I think very beautiful. So here we have our Page of Cups, which is one of my favorite cards in the deck. He's got his cup in his hand. He's contemplating what's going on. And behind him, there's this giant whale that is leaping out of the ocean, this big energy behind him, but he's super focused on what he's, what moment he's in right now. And I think that's really interesting for the Page of Cups. So here we have our Knight of Cups with our person on the seahorse, which I think is quite lovely. Kind of tying back in a little bit to that sort of hopeless romantic that we often see in the Knight of Cups. I get a little bit of that energy here, and I think that does work quite well for this deck. So here we have our beautiful Queen of Cups who definitely feels like she is kind of in her element here. She feels very at home, very in touch with her um, own emotional state. I do like that she has wings. So it's kind of interesting that she's kind of like a mer fairy and kind of gives the idea of maybe that fairy energy that she can kind of cultivate the things that she wants. Um, there's a little bit of magic here in this card, which I think is quite beautiful for a Queen of Cups. So here we have our King of Cups, which makes me giggle every time I see him because the look on his face is like he is quite pleased with himself, which I think is wonderful. We have the dolphin offering up the cup here. I just think it's a fun little card, a great interpretation for the King of Cups. So here we have our suit of pentacles, which is my favorite suit in this deck. It's my favorite suit in most decks, but in particular in this one. I think this is a beautiful ace of pentacles. She looks like she is creating something, maybe putting something together with all these beautiful shells that she has before her. And she herself is just absolutely stunning. Gorgeous ace of pentacles. So here we have our Two of Pentacles. We definitely get that sense of balance that we see in our traditional Two of Pentacles, but again, we're looking at a mermaid and she's quite lovely. So here we have our Three of Pentacles where we have this mermaid who's creating this beautiful statue. It definitely gives the idea of, you know, growth, things growing, creating things, and I think that works beautifully for the Three of Pentacles. Here we have our Four of Pentacles, which I do quite love in this deck because we have a figure who looks like he's got all of his resources together and there's all this kind of abundance around him, but he doesn't have that miser energy to him that we often see in the Four of Pentacles. I see him as being more mindful of his position, of his resources, finding that place of stability that he needs to move forward. And I think that works quite well for a Four. 
So here we have our five of pentacles with our little mermaids out in the cold. Um, very, again, traditional. I do like that we have the kind of stained glass pentacles kind of tying in. Again, not traditional imagery, but we definitely see a mermaid-esque theme because we have these little mermaids freezing in a little cave and maybe they cannot quite get to the ocean or maybe the ocean is frozen over at this point. So definitely a traditional-esque five of pentacles, but very tied into that mermaid energy. Here we have our six of pentacles with the beautiful ship going out. I love that we have all the pentacles are in the ship. We have all this kind of wealth and abundance that's flowing out from the ship. Kind of that idea of, of giving back to the ocean, giving back to the merfolk. I think that's quite beautiful. Here we have our seven of pentacles and we see the mermaid and she's kind of growing her pentacles, waiting for her things to come in, waiting for things to come to fruition. Beautiful. Here we have our gorgeous Eight of Pentacles. I love all the gold in this particular card. I think it's quite beautiful. And we have this mermaid here who looks like she's very much concentrating and paying attention to what it is that she's creating, what she's doing here. And I think that is lovely for our Eight of Pentacles energy. Here we have our beautiful nine, definitely looking at abundance and richness and affluence. Definitely get that sense in this card, even though, again, we are in a mermaid world. I think doing a pentacle suit in a water or a mermaid type deck is probably quite a challenge. And I do really like the way that um, Dame Darcy has depicted the pentacles in this particular deck. And here we have our ten of pentacles. And again, we have kind of the idea of the happy family but they don't necessarily look like they are a family just more community and I love that idea of not being tied in so much to kind of traditional family but more a broader sense of community because we have these different mermaids here we have some of the dolphins we have the kelp and the coral and all of that coming together to create this beautiful sense of community and togetherness which I think is just absolutely beautiful. So here we have our page of pentacles. And again, he looks very much like he is in, in contemplation or in study of this big pentacle that he has in his hand. He has all this stuff that he needs to learn and he is ready to undertake that. I think that's quite beautiful. Here we have our knight of pentacles. We have the idea of the you know knight going outward. He's on his seahorse and he's got his pentacle. But I love the fact that it, he doesn't look like he's moving super fast. Like the knight of pentacles is slow moving, it's slow transition, slow growth. And I love the fact that even though we are looking at water and we're looking at mermaids and, and creatures that could potentially swim quite fast, this seahorse does look a little bit more solid, a little bit more like you would be a little bit more slow moving. And I think that's quite lovely for the pentacle suit. So here we have my absolute favorite card in the deck, which is the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is my personal significator card. So if I absolutely love a Queen of Pentacles in a deck, that's always a good sign for me. I just think she's really beautiful. She really feels like she is in her element. She knows who she is. She knows what she's about. And she's going to go out and create this beautiful um, world from this place of grounded understanding. And I just it just really captures the Queen of Pentacles energy for me and I think it's quite beautiful. And here we have our King of Pentacles, which again, he looks very much in his realm. He's comfortable with who he is and what he's about and what he is putting out into the world. And I think that's quite lovely. So here we have our Ace of Swords. We have the kind of trident with the crown around it. I think that does work quite well for the swords. Um, there really aren't swords in the ocean. So using the tridents, I think works quite well for that. So we have our kind of traditional two of swords where we have the, the bound mermaid and she's got the cross tridents there. Quite beautiful. We do have three swords in the three of swords card and they are of course piercing the heart and we've got the eyes in the sky and everything is like raining blood. It is more of a traditional three of swords which isn't really my favorite but I think it's interesting enough and I do like that we have the eyes in there. Um, it kind of just gives it something a little bit different. I wish it was more of a mermaid scene because again, this is kind of similar to the High Priestess card. I don't really pick up mermaid vibes in this particular card, but um, I think it, you know, it's very traditional and it works well for a Waitsmith deck. 
So here we have our four of swords and in this card we do see four actual swords um, and we have what appears to be kind of like a human like figure. Are they dead? Are they resting? We're not really sure. Are they in the ocean or in the um, grass looking above? Are they in seaweed or in grass? Not really sure. This is kind of just taking that moment to pause and, and reassess what's going on and I think that's quite quite a great depiction for the four of swords. So here we have our five of swords and we see a little bit of that kind of conflict energy that we often see in the fives with the kind of um, lightning bolts coming out of the clouds. That idea of kind of there's a storm on the horizon. So he's got to gather what he needs and move forward in order to kind of weather the storm. Quite a great depiction for the five of swords. Here we have our six of swords. I think we actually have two mermaids. We have an adult mermaid here and looks like maybe a child next to her. And I feel like this, this sailor is maybe this is his family, his little mermaid family, or he's taking them back to where they came. That idea of kind of moving on, moving away from the things that no longer serve you into better mindsets. I think that's quite beautiful. So here we have our Seven of Swords, which does have a little bit of a reminiscent of a thiefy energy. But more what I pick out of this card is we don't really know what's going on. And that's kind of the deal with the Seven of Swords. We're never really sure what's being depicted here. Is he stealing those swords? Is he putting them back? Is he offering them in some beautiful dance to the moon? We don't really know. And I think that's one of the interesting things about the Seven of Swords is we never really quite know what's going on. And therein lies the message, I do believe. So here we have our Eight of Swords, again, very traditional, where we have the bound female figure with the eight swords around her. Interesting in this depict in this particular depiction that the swords are actually not encasing her, she's facing them. So all she really needs to do is unbind herself and turn around and she's out of there, <laughs> which I think is quite interesting. So here we have our Nine of Swords. That is a bit on the traditional side. However, rather than the swords, or in this case, the tridents being above her head, they are below her and she is looking down at them. So kind of this idea of facing your fears in this card, of facing the things that make you unsure or make you nervous. And I think that is beautiful because it's kind of a reverse of what we typically see. It's not so much all of this heavy worry hanging over your head, but more of a request for you to face those things. And I think that's quite lovely. So here we have our very traditional Ten of Swords, Sailor with the Ten Swords in his back, and we see his ship is actually sinking in the background, but there's no blood. He might get up, he might survive, he might move on, or maybe this is just the end of his journey and he's going to go on to other things. So here we have our Page of Swords, which I do quite like. We have this kind of young uh, figure, again, very con very contemplative in our pages. Um, or this page is actually kind of looking down at what's growing here and the shadows being cast by the little plant, maybe kind of looking at new ideas that are sprouting, that are that are growing and coming to the forefront of the mind. I think that's quite lovely. So here we have our Knight of Swords and I, I do quite like this particular card because we have this merman on the shark and he definitely looks like he is going out. He is ready to put his thoughts into action and he has no bones about it. So I think that is really quite wonderful and I love the kind of look on both his face and the shark's face. Like he looks super determined and the shark kind of looks like he's going, why am I here? <laughs> What am I doing? Again, it's just a little deck that makes me giggle. So here we have our beautiful Queen of Swords. I, I do like that she has tears running down her face because it does kind of tie into the idea of, you know, thoughts do cause emotion and queens being of the element of water in of themselves in a lot of different correspondences, we have kind of that water in air. So that emotional state that derives from the mental state. And I think that she actually depicts this quite beautifully and not something that I often see in a deck or in the the Queen of Swords and so I do quite like it. We usually see her as being very cold, very distant, but I think this card shows beautifully that we see that she has a softer side. There are emotions under the surface, but she knows how to control them all and I think that's quite beautiful. 
So here we have our King of Swords, and again, going back to those kind of uh, human figures that we see represented through a lot of the male figures in this deck. If you will notice, most of the male figures in this deck are human, not mer people. Um, and I think that that actually works quite well because we see that kind of human, more masculine, logical side of things represented in a lot of these cards through the male figures, and then the more emotional, um, intuitive, female side represented through the majority of the merfolk. So I think that actually works quite well in this deck. I think he's a wonderful, you know, king of swords. He, he looks very confident, very determined, and I think that's very indicative for that particular king. And moving into our final suit, we have the Ace of Wands. I do like that we have the oars kind of representing the wands here. We have this beautiful figure beneath the water, but the wand is, is coming up out of the water. I think that's beautiful. Here we have our two of wands, again with our kind of sailor figure here, and we have the idea that he's kind of plotting his course, right? Determining what path he's gonna take. Quite beautiful. Here we have our three of wands where we see our um, sailor here who's got his three wands and he's kind of looking at where he's going to be going. He's made his plans and now he's getting ready to put them into, into action. I think that works quite beautifully. So here we have our four of wands and I love that we have these four oars kind of holding up the um, garland up here, creating this lovely little stable environment. We see the, the castle in the background, the waves rushing in and it does look very much like our um, little sailor here. He's down on one knee, maybe he's proposing to this mermaid, you know, maybe offering her a new path to follow. Um, but the stability and the structure that comes with his life on land, I think that's quite interesting. So here we have our five of wands and we have definitely that idea of kind of conflict and strife. These mermaids do not necessarily look like they are just kind of play fighting. They do look like they are having a bit of a disagreement here and maybe going after each other with their oars. Um, but I think it, it does definitely speak to that conflicting and disruptive energy of the five and the fact that they all look like they are very passionate and determined, I think it does really relate back well to the energy of the wands. So here we have our six of wands and we see our kind of typical victory type of energy depicted here. We have the one mermaid who's on his little seahorse and you can see all the little oars around him, all the people who've come together to maybe watch him and celebrate him on his little uh, quest. I think that's quite beautiful. So here we have our seven of wands and this card makes me laugh every time I see it because the look on her face is one part determination and one part scared to death. <laughs> and so I think that's quite interesting. There's a lot going on in this card and we're not really sure whether she is scared, determined or somewhere in between. And again, I think that kind of ties back into that sort of little bit of unknowing in the sevens really depicted quite wonderfully in this seven of wands. So here we have our Eight of Wands, very traditional Waite Smith, where we have kind of that, that motion and that energy indicative of as we tend to see the wands kind of striking through the air. So here we have our Nine of Wands, which I quite love, where we have all these wands with all this kelp. Um, again, the nines can be a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of energy going on and we can kind of see that reflected here in kind of all this kelp that's kind of wrapped around him. Yes, there's, it's good and there's abundance and all of that, but again, that can be a little bit restrictive and a little bit overwhelming. And I think that this card really depicts that quite beautifully. So here we have our 10 of wands. And again, this is another one of my favorite cards in the deck. I think the coloration on this card is, is beautiful. I love the idea that she's holding all of these oars. She's holding them rather awkwardly though. So I get the feeling or the, the idea that this um, isn't a really comfortable responsibility or comfortable burden that she's carrying, but she is still carrying it. She's still making it work for her. It may not be the most comfortable thing in the world, but you know, growth moving on, moving forward isn't always comfortable. So I think this card again depicts that beautifully. So here we have our page of wands. Again, he looks very contemplative. He's looking at what is growing out of this wand, maybe looking at all the lessons that he's learned through the ace through the 10. And now he's ready to kind of take that within and really learn from that. And I think that's quite beautiful. 
So here we have our Knight of Wands, and again we have this um, kind of sailor or nautical person, and this time we're on a horse on the beach, really going out and put his put his passions into motion. I love that the mane on the horse as well as the sort of feather in his cap have a little bit of like a fire energy to them. I think that's really wonderful. We really get that idea of fire and passion and movement, which I think is, is really fantastic for the Knight of Wands. And here we have our Queen of Wands and she just looks like she is a lot of fun. She is really in her own element. She's in her body. There's a little bit of sensuality in this card too, which I think works really well for the Queen of Wands. Um, she's all about her passions, cultivating it, um, exploring it and putting it out into the world. I think that's beautiful. And finally, we have our King of Wands, who's a very interesting figure in this deck. He knows what he is, he knows what he's about, but there's a lot of heavy shadow in this card. And so I think it kind of hints a little bit to the burden and responsibility that also comes along with the King of a suit, of being kind of master of that domain. There's there's responsibility there, and I think the shadow kind of depicts that weight beautifully. There's joy and burden in both, and I think that is just absolutely beautiful in this card. So that is a really in-depth look at the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot and kind of my thoughts on the cards and the relationships that I've kind of cultivated with them over um, the last couple of years. As I've mentioned, this is a deck that I work with quite uh, frequently um, in the summertime and I really really enjoy the kind of lighthearted nature to it that we get overall but as you might have noticed through the walkthrough there are several cards in here that feel like they do have a lot of depth and I think you can find depth in all of these cards. Um, overall I would say for me the energy is fun and uh, beachy and playful and, and, and invites me to be fun and playful too but there are elements of depth and shadow in this deck as well. So let's go ahead and just give the deck a little bit of a shuffle. Um, they are a thicker, a little bit thicker matte cardstock. I'm unsure what the actual GSM is on them. Um, and they can be a little bit difficult to shuffle uh, just because they're, they're a little bit thicker and so it can be a little bit hard to get my hands around, but I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I love the matte gold gilding on them. Again, they are a matte card, so they do have a little bit, little bit of a stick. I mean, they don't slide as well as if they were uh, like a satin, but I can still overhand them quite nicely as well. And for me, this deck just has a really fun, playful energy. I didn't shuffle very well, so we're probably gonna get a lot of uh, similar cards, but I think there is a lot of depth to be found in these cards as well. But for me, this is a deck that that encourages me to um, kind of find that play, find that element of fun in the cards. And I do tend to look for the things that are just a little bit off, right? Just a little bit different, like the devil with his either tears or sweat. I'm not sure which. Um, that's one of the fun things about working with this deck is I kind of like to find those little things that are just a little bit different. You know, the ha 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 here in the fool or this queen of wands as she's kind of pulling her tights on and doing her little her little thing. Um, this nine of pentacles with this super long tail that's just oddly shaped and super long. But again, I think there's little things to be found in there. Um, as well as like kind of the depth that we see like here in the moon card or here in the king of wands that I mentioned. Um, and as well as here in the nine of cups, these are three cards that just kind of take it on face value. You know, we might just as assign our, our basic understanding, our basic interpretations of them. You know, the nine of cups, we've got fulfillment, the moon, we've got, you know, connecting to that wild intuitive nature and the king of wands we've got you know being a master of our of our desires master of our passions but there is more going on in each of these cards in this nine of cups we can see his face is maybe he's not quite so happy maybe he's a little bit overwhelmed by all of this going on it's a little too much pageantry and celebration for him in the moon we see that there are things lurking beneath the surface um, are these tentacles moments away from grabbing her and dragging her down 
down or are they reaching up in celebration with her? Again, kind of that shadowy energy. And here with this King of Wands, as I mentioned, we kind of have that, um, the shadow kind of creating a little bit of heaviness to this card, kind of indicating that, you know, the crown of the king, as they say, heavy is the head that wears the crown, right? And I think that's depicted beautifully. But then we also have, you know, on the flip side of that, our, our fun cards and, and our, our romantic cards. Um, there's a lot of cards that I feel like have a little bit of a romantic nature to them as well. Um, as we can see here, you know, kind of like in our Ace of Cups, that abundance and overflowing. In our Four of Wands, we look like maybe he's proposing here. Our Two of Cups, definitely this idea of these two people coming together. And so I really enjoy the fact that this um, deck, while I say it is fun and light and um, brings a lot of joy, there is a lot of um, depth in these cards as well. There's a lot of other things going on and when you really start kind of diving deeper into this artwork and you're really looking at what's going on in the artwork, a lot of different things can start to pop up. Like this Nine of Wands here where we can see kind of this this kelp, this abundance of, of kelp around him, but it almost looks like he could be tangled in it or he's moments away from being tangled in it or maybe he's just a part of it. And again, that would I think depend on your um, the type of reading that you're doing and, and the position that that card happens to fall in. So I really enjoy that about this deck. It's a solid reader for me. It reads really well for a variety of topics and um, uses. This is one of those decks that I really could pull out and, and use it for any type of a reading. But it's definitely a deck that I tend to be more drawn to during the summer. I think that's probably because of the sort of mermaid vibe and the kind of beachy energy that it has. And that is something that I personally associate with summer because that's when I go to the beach because... Well, the beach along the Oregon coast isn't um, isn't the warmest place to be the rest of the time of the year, although I do quite enjoy the beach in the winter time because there is something very special about that as well. Kind of like our Queen of Swords here, right? There, there's more going on um, than just summer fun. Um, but I think that this is such a beautiful deck, and I do think that um, it, there's a lot of depth here as well as a lot of fun and play and exploration. Um, there's more going on beneath the surface if you're willing to put the time in and you're willing to look for it and work with it in that way as well. Um, I do know that there were some issues. I, I have heard uh, there were some issues with this deck when it originally came out. Um, some of the uh, cards I do believe were illustrated very closely to another deck. I do not have any personal information about that. That was way before I came onto the um, sort of global broader community, um, tarot community here. So I don't know anything about that situation um, or really any details about it. I'm just aware from people leaving comments um, on videos when I've shown this deck that there was issue with that. As far as I know, the creator has addressed those issues and I believe has changed um, the cards that were problematic as far as I know. And I do believe the deck I have includes those changed cards. But again, I do not know the details. So I really don't want to speak to that too much because I, I would be talking about things I don't really know about and that's not really something I'm comfortable doing. So um, I, I am aware of that, but that again was before me. And as far as I know, things have, have been addressed and changed and it does not change um, the way that I work with the stack or the way that I feel about it. It's definitely a um, favorite in my collection. It's just one of those decks that I, that I know I can turn to at any time. It's like a deck, a, an old friend deck. Um, I know it's always there for me and I know it'll give me a laugh if I need one, but it'll also give me those harder messages and it'll dive deep into the shadow if I need as well. And it does really well at kind of pulling out whatever it is that I need to pull out in the moment be that um, I don't really know what's going on here and I'm a little bit scared or I just want to kind of hang out with friends and, and enjoy working with this deck. Um, it just works really beautifully for that and I find it to be very 
flexible and fluid in that sense. And it is traditionally, it, it is a traditional Waitsmith inspired deck, um, which is not always my favorite because it doesn't always line up with how I read the tarot. But I honestly, I have no problems working with this deck and reading with this deck in a more um, numerological and elemental type of way. I think it works beautiful for that as well. And it's just a, a, a fantastic deck that I truly do enjoy working with in my collection. So that is quite an in-depth look at the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. Again, it is a treasure deck in my collection, so I really wanted to spend some time sharing it with you and talking about my own experiences and my interpretations of the cards and how I've found working with it and what I kind of use it for in my collection. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this deck, if you have it, if you've seen it. Um, so please feel free to share with me in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.